wonder hussy here. <laughs> Why am I dressed up so fabulously? Well, let me tell you something. It's at least 100 degrees here in Las Vegas today, and I certainly wouldn't be wearing this full-length white fake fur coat if it wasn't for a really good reason. You know I'd only risk hyperthermia for a very worthy cause. And well, there aren't really that many of them going around in Vegas these days. But there is one, and I'm here right now. It's the Liberace Garage. That's right, you know, Liberace, the super fabulous fancy piano player from, oh gosh, back in the 50s, 60s, 70s, I think he lived into the 80s, uh, and he played piano at a fabulous show here in Vegas. And he always wore beautiful fur coats and crazy over-the-top costumes. Everything was covered in rhinestones and sequins. And man, he was just, he is one of my all-time style icons. Anyway, aside from being an amazing pianist and having a fantastic fashion sense, Liberace also had a really amazing car collection. And matter of fact, there used to be a Liberace museum here in Las Vegas for years and years. Uh, I remember going to it before I moved to Vegas, uh, down on East Tropicana, not too far from here, where you could go look at all of his costumes and his personal effects. And well, they had a bunch of his cars on display there too. Uh, but I'm not sure what happened. For some reason, that museum ended up closing uh, 10, 15 years ago. But the car portion of it is still available to check out just at a new location. So I never even thought about going here until randomly I got a, a text message from a, a girlfriend of mine who works here. She texted me out of the blue yesterday and it was all because, well, it was all because I guess two fans of this channel came into the Liberace garage and they saw she had a tattoo of a little trailer on her arm and I guess they said, oh, that looks like Wonder Hussey's trailer. And she goes, oh, Wonder Hussey, I know her. And they start talking, next thing you know, she texts me, I didn't know you worked at the Liberace garage. Well, guess what? She invited me to come down and take a look at Liberace's cars. And I guess her boss even said it was okay for me to shoot video in there. So I'm super excited. So you can see we're here in a sort of nondescript little strip mall in an industrial part of town. Uh, well, right next to the new Raiders football stadium there, which hasn't even ever been used yet. <sighs> Boondoggle. And, uh, well, you can see there's a, a couple of Vegas hotels there. There's the Luxor, but ugh, I'm gonna leave my <laughs> fur coat in the car for now, because, man, it is hot. Like I said, it's at least 100 degrees in. Well, besides, <laughs> the rest of my outfit is pretty friggin' fantastic, too. Unfortunately, I think I'm gonna have to wear a mask in here, so better put that on first. Thankfully, one of my viewers sent me this awesome patriotic mask that just happens to go perfectly with my outfit. And I should mention that I do have mask proof lipstick on. It's uh, one of those lipsticks that stays on no matter what. I think this is Cover Girl Outlast. Mask proof. Okay, here we are <laughs> coming into the fabulous Liberace Museum. Look at his friggin outfit. That's why I love Liberace so much. His style. Don't we make a charming pair? Okay, let's see where my friend Susie is. Oh, Susie, hi. Hey, Wonder Hussey, how's it going? It's going great. Welcome to the Liberace Garage. Thank you so much for inviting me. And so you said I can walk around and shoot video of these cars? Absolutely. All these amazing cars. And we're gonna let you try on your a piano ring too, one of these fabulous rings. Oh my gosh, I get to try on a, a fancy piano ring like yes. Liberace used to wear. Okay, well, let me go look at the cars first and then we'll come back and catch up with you. Okay, wait, Susie wanted to slip into something a little more comfortable. She felt she didn't really look her best no. in this blazer. It's what do you have stripes. on under the blazer, Susie? I got on. Oh, bah, bah, let me show you. Well, let me show you the tattoo that the guy saw. Oh, well, this is the tattoo I was saying that the two viewers who were here saw her cute little trailer tattoo. And well, they thought of me. Yep. Susie, I love the fact that you're wearing a blinged out mask at Thank the you. Liberace Museum. Yes, I must. Okay, we're going to go look at the car. Okay, well, there's about... Oh, one, two, three, four, five, six. There's like seven different cars here and a Surrey. So we have our work cut out for us. Just gonna blaze around and take a quick look because 
Well, they're actually getting ready to close and I don't want to be rude. Okay, we're actually going to start out over on this side with <laughs> the piano car. Now this is a reproduction of the original piano car. I don't know if you can tell, this is actually a hot rod with a friggin' grand piano mounted on it. Look at that. <laughs> How much fun would it be to ride around in that thing? Oh, Susie actually said I can, uh, I have special permission to go beyond the ropes. And that way we can get up closer to these cars and I can show you uh, what I'm talking about better. Thanks, Susie. Okay, so here's a close-up look at this friggin' hot rod piano. Can you imagine how much fun this thing would be to drive? And it's an actual grand piano mounted on it. And it's an actual hot rod. I mean, look at these friggin' tires. <laughs> oh, the shoot music. Of course, he's got the beer barrel polka lined up. That was one of his favorites. One of his signature numbers. Wow, beautiful hot rod. Okay, next in his car collection, we have this awesome authentic London taxi cab. <laughs> okay, so this says, uh, well, I don't know if it was London, it was an English taxi cab that apparently Liberace actually used to drive around in Palm Springs. He also had a house in Palm Springs and he would go pick up his friends from the airport in this freaking taxi cab, which Look at this friggin' hound's tooth upholstery on the door. How cool is that? And then look at the driver's side is on the right because it's an English car. It still has the little meter box. You know, since they're closed now, I think I can go ahead and take my mask off. It'd probably be easier to hear me this way. Wow, what a trip. I'd love to be picked up at the airport <laughs> in a friggin' car like this. Can you imagine? Now, meanwhile, between the cars, there's also some of his costumes which, you know, he had an amazing fashion sense. There's a little suit that he wore. Here, look at this. I think this is actually uh, a costume from the movie Behind the Candelabra that was on HBO. You know that movie they made, oh gosh, about five, six years ago with Michael Douglas as Liberace and Matt Damon as his chauffeur? Oh, amazing movie. Michael Douglas was so good in it. Uh, but I think that's a costume from that movie, not an actual outfit Liberace wore. And as a matter of fact, Oh, that might just be a costume from the movie too. Okay, enough about costumes, we're here for the cars. Here's a Bradley GT, look at this. Look at the paint job, man. Can you imagine? That is, woo, gold flake. Love it. Wouldn't that be fun to cruise around in? Look at how the windows open. Aha! And I don't know if you can see inside, but there's like this amazing uh, harvest gold crushed velour upholstery. <laughs> And look at the little decal on the side of the candelabra. Oh gosh, stop it, Liberace. He was just too much. Wow, look at that muffler. <laughs> I bet this thing made some noise. Okay, now we're coming to what might be my favorite car. Well, gosh, I was gonna say it might be my favorite, but well, it's in the top five. This is a Swarovski crystal encrusted Rolls Royce. <laughs> They're all Swarovski crystals, individually hand applied, by the way. But look how beautiful this, I mean, it's a beautiful Rolls Royce. I mean, I guess some of you watching this might be like, oh God, why would you do that to a gorgeous car? But I don't know. I think it looks even better with all the bling on it. Oh wait, is this a Rolls Royce? I don't even know. The steering wheel said Chevrolet. Oh gosh, I forgot already. The guy here gave me a tour and was very helpful and told me all about these cars and I already forgot. What does it say? True classic. Oh my God, beautiful wheels too. But yeah, look at all this sequence and stuff. It's all just glued on there by hand. These were only used on stage. I don't think he drove these around on city streets. Okay, and then right next to the Swarovski encrusted car. <laughs> Well, here we have Matt Damon's costume from that HBO movie, his little chauffeur costume. But look at this. Okay, this is a Rolls Royce, and this is friggin' amazing. Mirrored. Look at all those mirrors. Those are also hand applied, one by one. Like, that's precise work. <laughs> and again, I'm sure some people watching this are like, oh God, why would you do that to a beautiful Rolls Royce? It's so tacky. And to you, I say, have you no taste? This isn't tacky, this is fabulous. 
Like you can see my reflection kind of in the mirror since <laughs> all uh, deconstructed and weird. Oh man, just amazing. Okay, so here's the Rolls interior. Oh, by the way, this is all these awesome chandeliers. Liberace is really into candelabras and chandeliers. But here's the, uh, look at the, look at the L, the monogram. <laughs> look how beautiful this Rolls is on the inside. I mean, pristine white upholstery. That's ermine carpeting, by the way. That's ermine, the animal, the fur. Look, you can even see there's like a phone in the back, a car phone, which was very fancy back in those days. It's before uh, cell phones. Look, here's a movie poster for the movie I was talking about with good old Mike Douglas and Matt Damon. And then behind the movie poster, <laughs> here's another car. I don't, I don't remember what he said this one was, but some of you watching this probably know. It's an old timer. <laughs> <laughs> and look how beautiful the upholstery is. Everything was, is very well preserved. You know, that's what the nice thing about the desert, I guess. There's no, uh, you don't have to worry about rust, humidity. As long as you keep it garaged out of the sun, things stay pretty nice. Oh, look at the license plate on this one. 88 keys, like the piano keyboard. Okay, next we're going to go look at, well, again, I was going to say this is my favorite car. And it might be in the top two. Look at this beautiful Pepto-Bismol pink and disco ball accented <laughs> Rolls Royce. Oh my God. And it's a convertible. Oh my gosh. It's a, oh wait, it's a Volks Royce, my bad. Please refrain from judging the Volks Royce. <laughs> a Volks Royce, I don't know. Wasn't the whole point of the Volks to be like the people's car? And then the Rolls Royce is like the polar opposite of that. <laughs> I'm not sure. Okay, uh, next to the Volks Royce, we have Liberace's Surrey, which he would use to ferry friends around town. He had a little shopping center here in town with a restaurant, and uh, that's where the old museum was. And we'll go by there in a little bit, actually, after we leave here. I'll show you guys. But that's where he used to, apparently, he used to drive people around in this Surrey with the fringe on the top. Oh, gosh. I can never see a Surrey without thinking of that song. Chicks and geese and ducks better scurry. When they see me out in the Surrey, when they see me out in the Surrey with the fringe on top. The wheels are black, the upholstery is red, the dashboard, well, there isn't one. Uh, never mind, forget I said anything. Okay, now we're gonna go look at what I think is my number one favorite car here. And it's the reason I wore this whole friggin' outfit. Look at this beaut. Woo woo. Nar, 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 nar. <laughs> Man, nobody would mistake you for a communist in this thing. That's for sure. Oh my God, stop it. There's a patriotic eagle on the back. Shut the front door. I didn't even notice that. Look, with his name. Oh God. This is the most patriotic car I've ever seen. And well, the upholstery and interior bears that out. And then of course, just a, a small tasteful line of bling. And of course, blinged out stars. And that is why I wore this whole friggin' patriotic outfit because, well, they actually let me get inside the car and take a picture. Whew, okay, wow, now it's time to go check out the Liberace jewelry selection. Yeah, what do we have here, Susie? We just have one style. Just it's one a style. Ring. A piano ring? Oh, okay. But you must try one on. Oh, I'd so love to. Okay. I'm going to say, you. I'm going to guess you're about a six. A six? Okay. Yeah, let's see. Oh my god. <laughs> Is it too big? Does it fit? Oh, it fits. It's fabulous. Wow, I already feel ten times more fabulous. Will this uh, enable me to play the piano? I hope so. <laughs> let's not find out. <laughs> Oh, far out look, Susie has some swag for me. Look at this. Yes, swag. <laughs> look at this postcard. I love it. And, and uh, I a got bumper bling. sticker. Yeah. I sure do. I got bling for days. And you know what else I have? What? I have amazing friends. Oh, thank you. In high places. Thank you. Wow. That museum was amazing. Uh, I should note that with the Liberace part, they're undergoing a huge expansion. They're opening a whole new back room. And so what we just saw isn't even close to what it's gonna look like when they're done. So you can expect something even more fabulous if you decide to come check it out for yourself. Oh, man, my head is swimming. And well, 
all of a sudden my rig just seems so boring. Eh, that's okay. You know my motto. Dust, not diamonds. Okay, well, we still have plenty of daylight, so how about we take a little drive, since it's kind of on my way home anyways. Uh, let's go check out Liberace's old house. <laughs> now, you'll probably find this kind of surprising because, gosh, his cars were so fabulous and his clothes were so fabulous, but his house... Well, his house isn't really that fancy. I actually went to a party at it back in uh, 2013, I think, around then. And I was, well, I was kind of disappointed. Well, you'll see, let's just drive over there. Okay, his house actually isn't very far away from where those cars were. You just gotta go right across the old Las Vegas Strip, the world famous Las Vegas Strip. We're cruising down Tropicana, Avenue and you can see uh, off to the right there's the Luxor and the Tropicana Hotel and then off to the left here <laughs> well there's the old New York New York I'm actually kind of curious to check this out somebody told me they put a mask on the Statue of Liberty let's see if that's true <gasps> it's true oh my god ah! <laughs> I don't know if you can see that but well first of all they put a Raiders jersey on the Statue of Liberty what an indignity. <laughs> it's because the, the Raiders moved to Vegas. That's who that fancy new stadium was built for. But then they also put a mask on her, I guess, to promote, uh, what do they, I think they call it, Vegas Safely, something like that. Because they're still trying to get business here. You know what I mean? Despite the pandemic, they still want people to come here and party, but you can see for yourself. There's not too many people walking around on that bridge there. It's pretty quiet. Okay, but we're actually continuing eastward on Tropicana, crossing over the Strip. Uh, we're gonna go, oh gosh, about another mile. Okay, so you can see we're not in a very glamorous part of town. We're just kind of right by the airport. It's off to the right there. And then UNLV, the university's kind of off to the left. And it's just sort of a, well, an area that probably used to be really fancy houses back in the day, but now it's kind of like, low price student housing, oh, low rent apartments, you know, humble homes. You certainly wouldn't expect to see a world famous mansion here, but we're gonna turn right, right here on good old Shirley Street. <laughs> and it's right down here. I mean, look at this. This is just a normal street, normal houses, right? I'm sure back in the day in the 60s, you know, they were pretty nice, but you know, it's not like a fancy neighborhood. <laughs> and then all of a sudden, <laughs> dun dun dun! The Liberace Mansion. Oh my god, look at that friggin' mansion. I'm gonna go ahead and park. <laughs> Man, I sure would love to have a mansion of my own one of these days. Maybe not quite like this, but can you imagine instead of these L's that have W's? Anyway, this is what it looks like in the front. I think they actually rent this out for like events and stuff. You can have like weddings, parties here. Oh, wow, look. Uh, here's a little information about it. The Liberace Mansion, built 1962, has been placed on the Clark County Register of Historic Places. Oh, that's cool. The building was cited for its outstanding historical and cultural significance. Well, I'd agree with that. <laughs> look how fabulous the gates are, all these golden grapevines. <laughs> I mean, just for being this kind of random house in the middle of a neighborhood full of... Oh, random homes, which you can see. Sorry about the sun being right there, but it's just regular residential neighborhood. It's pretty fancy. It looks like there's another sign in there with more information on it, but unfortunately it's kind of too far away to read. But yeah, uh, like I was saying, I actually went to a party here once back in like 2013, I think when the current owners first bought it. And well, to be honest, I was, I hate saying this, but I was kind of underwhelmed. It's not very fancy on the inside. I mean, basically, my understanding is that Liberace just bought two, you know, regular sized homes, which by the way, that one's boarded up over there. Hmm. But he, he basically just bought two tract homes in this neighborhood of tract homes and like stitched them together. You can kind of see there's like some kind of weird solarium he built up top. So it's basically just two tract homes stuck together. So I guess that explains partly why when I went inside, I was kind of underwhelmed. You know, I was expecting this super fancy mansion with, you know, marble everywhere and golden 
faucets and cherubs on the ceiling. And yes, to be honest, there was a little bit of that. The only part of the whole place that I remember being impressive to me was his bathroom. He had this big jacuzzi tub with a frieze on the ceiling with his face painted on it. It was kind of creepy. <laughs> Anywho, that was Liberace's house. So now we've seen Liberace's cars. We've seen Liberace's house. There's one more Liberace site we can go visit before I go home and, well, change into something more comfortable. Ugh, God, it's five o'clock and it's still so friggin' hot. My car says it's 102 and I believe it. All right, we're gonna just head on a little farther down Tropicana to where the old Liberace Museum was, which was in a shopping center that was owned by Liberace. He, uh, he had his, well, I don't know if he had a museum back then, but he also had a restaurant. He had this restaurant called Tivoli Gardens, I think like a little Italian restaurant. And apparently it was, well, I ate there once before it closed back in like 2010, I think. And I actually do remember it being pretty good. I think I had chicken marsala. I actually remember what I ordered. It was good, but I wasn't really there for the food, to be honest. I was there because it was Liberace's restaurant, A, and B, it was decorated pretty, <laughs> well, it was pretty over the top inside. It was kind of like 70s, 80s, like white wicker, I want to say. This was 10 years ago now. Uh, but the thing that really stuck out in my mind is there were there was a bar shaped like a grand piano that you could sit around that had bar stools. I think there was two of them, actually. Uh, and I just thought that was, I thought that was just kind of fun. I love that kitschy, quirky stuff, you know? Okay, so continuing eastward on Tropicana Avenue, just past Maryland Parkway, which I kind of live off Maryland Parkway about oh, five miles that way. This is uh, still a kind of unglamorous-ish part of town. You know, it's not like a bad part of town. It's just nothing super exciting. But I guess back in Liberace's day, uh, it was probably, well, Vegas was a lot smaller, so it was probably a, a lot busier here and maybe a little a little bit more exciting. Okay, here we go. Here's uh, Here comes the Liberace, the ex-Liberace Museum. Are you ready for this? Oh my goodness, what happened? Oh no, this is depressing. Okay, it's not depressing that there's this awesome vegan taco place here now. That used to be the museum right there. Sorry, the sun is right friggin' behind it. But that restaurant actually looks super good, so I'm not too upset about that. Then there's an adult daycare center in the middle. And then this here used to be the restaurant here. I'm gonna park here in the shade so maybe I can get a little bit better light. Okay, that funky glass thing. I feel like that was part of the restaurant. I'm not sure, now I'm confused. I don't know, but you can clearly see there's still a mural of Liberace. <laughs> a really cool tile mural, actually. <laughs> that makes no sense now because Liberace has nothing to do with this real estate anymore. I don't remember where the restaurant was. Well, maybe the restaurant is where the taco place was and the museum was on this side. I don't know. Yeah, I guess in retrospect, that makes more sense. So where the vegan taco place is, that was Tivoli Gardens, the swanky Italian restaurant, which by the way, my friend Scott, who you might remember from some of my videos, well, he, he grew up here, born and raised in Vegas. And uh, I think he told me he used to work there as a busboy. And I, I feel like he told me that Liberace maybe hit on him once, but well, you know how Scott is. That could just be his imagination. But anyways, yep. That was the Liberace Museum and Restaurant. So now you've seen Liberace's Business Empire, you've seen Liberace's House, and you've seen Liberace's Cars. Now the guy who runs the uh, Liberace Car Garage, well they also, the Liberace Foundation, they also have all his old costumes and some more, I think, well, some of his pianos and some of his artifacts at a separate facility, okay? So there's two museums you can go to. You can go to the car garage and you can go to the Liberace collection, which is housed, bizarrely enough, in this weird old mansion that Michael Jackson used to live in. Uh, not too far from here, actually kind of near where I used to live, my old house. Uh, it's, it's a bizarre, it's a long story. But anyways, in this m weird mansion that Michael Jackson used to live in, now they have a bunch of Liberace's costumes and artifacts and stuff. And so, huh, fingers crossed, I might get an invitation to go check that out too. Because, well, you know me. Sure, I'll say that I'll take dust over diamonds and 
you know, I'll, I enjoy getting down and dirty and camping with the best of them. But I do also enjoy my costumes and my fun and my bling. And well, I guess that's why I ended up moving here to Vegas. But anyways, I need to get home, man. First of all, I need to get changed out of this freaking outfit because I'm hot, I'm sweaty. I'm also, while I'm on my period, I'm kind of I'm kind of bloated and I feel like a star-spangled sausage. <laughs> Ugh, never mind. I couldn't wait a minute longer. I had to get out of that friggin' dress and I had to get that friggin' hairdo out. So I just went ahead and changed my clothes right here in the parking lot of the old Liberace Museum. <laughs> Sorry, Lee. Ah, much better. Dang, my hair's getting long. Guess I ought to wear it down more often.